Hey everybody, this is Blue, and we're going to talk about experience points and that. Um, I've been seeing a lot of comments throughout the years about how much people hate combat and they hate experience points. They want to get rid of the, that type of system because they hate the math. I've gotten the opinion that people that love playing D&D &D have to be kind of simpletons. They have to be a little bit lazy and a little bit undereducated. That's just my opinion. You can hate me for that. That's fine. They remind me of the people that go out and about and say, I didn't use any algebra today. Woohoo! I don't like ignorant people. And these people are willfully ignorant, and I just don't like them. All right. Experience points are a part of the role playing games. Okay. So if you can't handle it on paper, just do it on the computer and stop your day and complaining because the computer is doing all the work for you. But for those of you who are DMs and GMs and love to do the tabletop, you know, and getting out the paper, it's mostly just basic math. If you cannot handle basic math, this is not the game for you. Again, role playing can be played by most people. It can be played by everyone, actually, but it's not meant for everyone. There are a lot of social stigmas with it, and there is a lot of numbers and thinking and, you know, character creations. We got a lot of numbers to deal with, especially if you play role master, but it is more thought and thinking at times. And if you can't handle it, this game isn't for you. Okay, that is the brutal truth. So, in D&D, this is the um, X, XP chart for your levels. How many XPs you need to go to get to the next level, okay? It's pretty simple math, right? I hear people complaining about how it is a multi-layered system, and it just seems like so many D&D players are unable to see very far in front of them. Rollmaster is better. This is the Rollmaster system. All right, now you can see how we go up to 20 levels here, and there is the nice leveled system. We learn more just starting off and that's why it is so much easier to gain levels earlier on but to advance as we get better we have to take in more because usually we've already done this stuff we need something new type um, understanding on that and so that's why it is harder to go from fifth to sixth level than it is to go from first level to second level. Okay? It's not that hard to understand. We have to make it more of a challenge. And that's what the games did. It's easy. But we have a lot of people that complain about experience points. They say you have to be a freaking accountant to figure it out. No, you don't. It's basic math. And all you have to do is have cheat sheets. Like this little sucker right here. This is from Merp, and which is also by the same company. Well, Merp was sold by Iron Crown Enterprises, which is the company that manufactures Rollmaster. And this was their experience point record sheet. It's a cheat sheet. And we're going to go through this. Um, but we want our players to
to have fun, right? And so we need to reward their PCs with experience points when they do something. Okay, it's not just combat. They might have had to do a special maneuver to, uh, physical maneuver to accomplish a part of a goal. They might have had to do a running jump across the creek and not fall into the water to disturb it. They needed to do it as quietly as possible, okay? And so if they did this, we could say that it is a moderate maneuver and they rolled, they succeeded, thus they should get some experience points from it, right? So we as GMs, if we want to see the players happy and they want to see how their character advances, we need to give them experience points. And most of these gaming systems have amazing little charts that you can go to. It's not that damn hard. Let me see if I can get that one a little bit bigger. This is for Rollmaster. I'm going to be showing Rollmaster charts here. And this is the point system for when your when the player characters kill a monster, a target, whatever. And so this is when they d deliver the actual killing blow. And so if you have this level one, first column, character, and they kill a level three creature, you know, that's 300 experience points. Write it down on the chart. It's not that hard. And there we go. There's the chart. Same one I got here. So first row, you know, you put your names on their names on it. No big deal. Hit points. Okay. If they're in combat situations, they're going to take damage. Put it down. They get points for taking damage. Okay. Every hit they take, they get an experience point. Next row down is critical points. And that should be this one right here, right? Yeah. Okay. Now this is for the role master system. In their combat, if you do really good in striking your opponent, you'll get a critical. It's A, B, C, D, or E. Um, e the higher the letter, the more damage it does. And so, you go by their opponent's level. So let's say they are going up against a level 10 um, troll, okay? And one guy gets a B critical. So if you look at that chart, they get 100 experience points. Write it down. And then you have another guy, he's a lot better, good fighter, and he done really good, got a good roll, and he got the E critical. There's 250 experience points. You would add all those down in the critical area. Pretty simple. Now, sometimes if you're doing a really intensive battle, you have to get a second page or you know, scrap paper. And really, that's all you need if you're role playing, and that is to have. Plenty of scrap paper. Just grab it and you know you can put down information. You should grab a page and go, all right, this is Maynor's offensive bonus with his battle axe. This is his offensive bonus with his dagger, with his bola. You know, this is his armor class, this is his defensive bonus, and what other little things you need to write down and have it right there next to you. So it makes it easier to figure out what your offensive and defensive bonuses are. It speeds up combat. A lot of this is about preparation. Okay? If it's worth doing, do it right. And we want, like I, I said before, we want them to succeed. We honestly, good GMs, DMs, want their players and their player characters to succeed. 
underneath critical points is kill points. And I believe I showed you that list right there we go. That one right there. So if they kill, if your level one kills a level zero, they get 50 experience points. Okay, it's, and we just write that down. Um, what I've always done when I did, instead of writing the points, because that can, those numbers are bigger, you can put down, you know, level one, and then just, you know, put a little tally mark on there. So we go, well, during this campaign session, you killed six level ones, two level twos, and that equals this many points. And you just told it right there in that box. Pretty easy. Maneuver points. Um, maneuver and skill points. They're the same thing here in Rollmaster. And so this could be doing something physical, like I was talking about jumping the creek and without splashing in the water. This could be a skill thing, you know, that you're doing inside where it's more about what you know instead of what you can do physically. Um, this could be outwitting um, a Riddler. This could be cooking. This could be crafting. This could be anything. But you make the skill roll and you award points to that PC and you write it down. Okay? Then at the end of the session, you just figure out what their total maneuver and skill points are. There you go. Spell points. Okay, it's just like um, skill points. There, it's almost like almost identical to the kill chart, in which they get points for casting a spell. So if you were a level five. Uh, mage and you cast a level four spell if I remember right that's 90 experience points write it down okay and again you write all this information down on your cheat sheet and then you just can easily add it up in at the end of your session miscellaneous points now this is where for me as the GM it's about you know, kind of go through what that PC did and how the player did on playing that PC. So if they were heavy into the role playing, they solved some other issues and all that, and they made the flow and the story go great, you give them something. Um, usually I figure out what the... Um, total levels are of the PCs, take that times 100, and then I divide it by 10. And so I just figure out on a scale, one to 10, this PC did an eight. So he gets 80% of the total level points times 100. Okay, that I thought was always the best way to do it. And it works for me. All right, so then, in this game, in Role Master, you add all that up into your total points. Oh, I for, I missed one. I forgot. There's travel points. Yes. Role Master is not a dungeon game. You do get into dungeons and all that, but it's about going from city to city, castle to castle. And so for every mile or kilometer, if you are in other parts of the world and all that, a point per mile. Okay. Then you add all that up to your subtotal. And then you add up everybody's subtotal points. You divide it by half and you add that to the individual total. So I think it's a flaw in some cases for Role Master because then if you have this really large group, you know, let's say you have 10 um, PCs in this group. That's a lot of, of your idea points because that's everybody's added up. And so, man, you can really get some points added up. The more people you have, the faster you're going to level up in Role Master. And so then, you know, you take that half and you add that to on the chart. Then you did their subtotal points plus the idea points, and there's your total XP and you level them up. 
Okay? It's not that hard, people. I mean, Rollmaster makes things difficult, yes, because, you know, there's, they have a lot of charts there. And they even have a section, I believe it's in Rollmaster Companion 5, where they, they go through all the college-level math on determine how many hits it takes to breach a wall. And, you know, if you want to go to that complexity, that's awesome. The more and more we assign experience points for things, you know, it makes every little thing that they do rewarding. And if you add things to the game, you're adding layers to the game. It's no longer just a boring, you're in a room. No, no, no. You are, you're in the gym, dungeon there and there is a wall that has a hole. And you can see there is somebody inside there. you got to break through that wall to get that person out. Well, how many hits does it take? We got the math right there. Okay. You can guess it, yes, and make it easy. But if you like realism and you want details to the games, you got to add all this. And if it's worth doing, do it right. If you are wanting just to do a mass kill in an open field, fine. That's that's you. Do it. But, you know, this is why I just dislike D&D so much. Is that people want it to be this ultra simple thing, you know, where all you do is role playing of the mind. Which is great. There should That should be a part of the game. But... There needs to be challenges, and so you got to roll the dice. You got to add more risks to it, and you know people got to go and face more difficulties because you can't go, yeah, you did it, yay! No, roll those dice. Let's see if you if that character actually was able to jump that creek. You know, and you know it adds difficulty because you know somebody's going to roll that one and fail. And then everybody's got to adjust and, you know, get through the difficulties, which adds more challenge thrill to the game. It seems that there's a lot of people that just want easy, easy mode. And so D&D &D and all of its clones is easy mode role playing. Rollmaster, I'd say, is difficult. Uh, level so you know like I, I've said if you want a challenge do role master if you want simplistic go continue playing D&D &D and all of its clones out there um, again it's about challenge and I have fun dealing with the challenges you know here is this massive thing that you got to get through you know, you got to jump over this creek without making any noise so you don't wake up any of the animals. You got to make sure that you are not seen by the guard and get up to the door. You got to then get out your little lock pick set and you got to pick the lock so you can get in. Okay, that's three skill rolls that you got to make. And if you're good and you develop those skills, you can get through it, no problem. But, you know, if you have somebody that's rather low level, you know they're going to screw up. Make it realistic and add the difficulties. And I find it a challenge to make it somewhat challenging for people to go through and do some of these complicated feats to achieve their goal. Okay? And so, yes, there is a lot of math, but I don't let the numbers scare me. And so I have my cheat sheets. I have multiple types of cheat sheets that I use during my campaigns and sessions. And I get through everything just fine. And if I can do it, you can do it. You don't need to be an accountant. You just got to buck up. You know, you're supposed to be an adult. Why don't we act like it? Again, man, another, another time of me being oh so nice. But anyway, that's my rant for right now. Everybody, please take care. Be at peace.